Hey, it's Joel Waltzman, CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. I'm in my favorite room of any house. And in fact, this house is an international award-winning house. On my left, I've got a heat pump, residential water heater, solar edge, solar inverter, an energy recovery ventilator, and in this eco-efficient home, I have an EcoFlow Delta Pro whole home backup solution. I'm gonna apply the finishing touches to this system, show you how it works, and we're gonna hear from Pam about the aspects that make this home award-winning. This was a global award winner. International. Yeah. International. It was an international competition, yeah. And how many universities competed, do you know? It started with 38 that began it in fall of 2021. And then in the end, there were 15 that moved into the final build and were able to meet it, and 11 in the actual final competition. Wow. So, yeah, it's, it's a rigorous process. <laughs> yes, and this was, <laughs> it was first time. place times that we didn't think we were going to make the, the deadline. Yeah. We had to have everything ready for all the kind of performance metrics, everything. They were measuring how long it took to get hot water to fill up two cups at 105 degrees temperature to, of course, the humidity level to temperature gradient, no more than two degrees anywhere in the entire house, varying. Wow. Passive performance, so we had to shut off all active systems for 48 hours, and we could not drop the temperature more than five degrees. And that was when it was 40 degrees and 35 degrees outside. Unbelievable. So there were a lot of tests that we did that were active tests, like the lighting levels everywhere had to be monitored and measured, the humidity level, the temperature level, uh, air infiltration, noise, sound, from exterior sound and interior sound. We have continuous running on the uh, energy recovery ventilation, so we're constantly bringing in fresh air from the outside and exhausting all air balanced as a system. That's pretty cool. Mm. This is the main electrical panel. I'm gonna pull it off and apply a multi-wire branch circuit. That's a two pole, 20 amp circuit with a receptacle mounted directly below the panel. What that's gonna allow me to do is charge both EcoFlow Delta Pro batteries that are right here on the floor at the same time from grid power. They're then capable of supplying this entire house with emergency backup in a manual, not automated fashion. But those EcoFlow batteries were an important part of the scoring system for this house that created the award-winning recipe. And that was just by a margin. It was a very competitive battle. And Jefferson Electric is proud to be part of that award-winning team. I'm gonna work the panel live. Love it, hate it, comment below because we've got other people utilizing power around the house. So here goes my two pole 20 amp breaker. This is a multi-wire branch circuit. This is where DIYers can really get wrong if they're not careful. That is gonna have a, a black, red, and one shared neutral, and one shared ground. Let me show you how it works. How each one of these EcoFlow Delta Pro batteries has the capacity, when charging at full rate, to use all the energy of a single circuit. So that's why I need a multi-wire branch circuit where I effectively have two circuits with a minimum number of conductors utilizing a 12-3 cable. Let's see how it works. I'm gonna do it now. Here it goes. Knock out, out. Arr. there's an aspect in the code called continuous load. That means if something's gonna operate under normal conditions for three hours or more, you have to have a 125% multiplier on it. So, what I'm telling you here is, with these EcoFlow batteries, given their capacity, could charge for three hours or more. So I'm gonna be upsizing the circuit to a 20 amp instead of a 15, so that I can handle not just the true capacity, but true capacity plus 125 times 125%. That's what I'm shooting for here. Probe the wall for obstructions. I think I'm gonna be pretty pretty free and clear. Definitely have the depth, that nice long blade screwdriver. Let's go at a couple different angles here. That one hole will be real easy to patch. I'm feeling, I'm seeing that cable move. I've got room there. Downward, upward, 
I want to make sure that the plate, the wall plate on the finished product is going to clear the panel and it definitely will there. So that'll work nicely. Okay. I like that. It's time to cut it in. Put my box in the vertical orientation. I like hand tools instead of power tools for more delicate work like this. Power tools are just so aggressive. You risk damaging other cables inside the wall. Whereas with a hand tool like this, you can feel exactly what's taking place. So gentle taps so I don't break out the drywall because there's only going to be that three inches of drywall on either side. More seesaw action. Handy dandy south wires. Love them. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pre-strip the eight inches that I want to have in my box. Exercising caution because this is energized and that ground wire in particular is exposed. So if one of these conductors pops up into the panel, we could have a nice little fireworks display. In fact, if you'd like to see a fireworks display, you can check out this video here. <laughs> whoops, 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 whoops. Uh, yes, electricians in a rush. Bad deal, bad deal. Kind of like painters in a rush, just a different kind of bad deal. It is required to use connectors for box entry. And what's interesting is that you've got, this box has a built-in connector. Now it looks very different than the Romex connector I'm using here. That flap right there, that's a sort of form of connector. And because I'm fishing wire in this void inside the wall, I'm not required to have, oh, here it goes. I'm not required to have any type of staples or support. I'm actually allowed by code to fish through voids unsupported. That's what I'm gonna do. See my connectors tighten down in place. So that should feed right up in there if I've got my spacing right. And I can use the conductor to hold it. Slide my lock nut on there. I had to supply the sound effects because it didn't just slide down the cable like I hoped. That's what, that's what I was hoping for right there. Okay, that's going on. Everything needs to be tool tight. Not death grip. Few things in the electrical world are actually full force death grip. It's more finesse. But that tool tight right there, that is what you want. All right, let's strip off this end of the cable. Left, left myself a little bit extra. Yes, I did. So the, there's an exterior means of disconnect on this house. That means that this is technically a sub panel. Call it the main panel because it houses all the circuit breakers, but it is technically a sub panel. And so neutrals and grounds need to be separated as they are in this panel. where you have got the neutrals down the side and then you've got the ground bars up here. And so that separation is required. All right, let's complete our receptacle before landing the breaker. That way everything's done down here. Let me show you what we're after. Red is a hot conductor. It's going to be connected to the breaker. I've got a clamp style receptacle, so I'm going to strip off about a half inch. White is neutral. Black is also a hot or phase conductor. And ground gets a loop, shepherd's hook, whatever you want to call it. Number one square drive for making the terminations. If you're fighting it with a Phillips, you're doing the wrong thing. Go out and buy you a number one square and you'll just be so pleased with how well it bites in there. All right, check this out. I'm not breaking the neutral tab. This is very important. I'm not breaking the neutral tab because see this terminal correlates to this socket, this terminal to this socket, and that tab right there combines them. There's only one neutral. However, on the hot side only, it doesn't matter in this case which is which, whether red is bottom or black is bottom. But I'm gonna put one under each terminal screw, intentionally separate it, and these are my two circuits. I'm gonna have one EcoFlow Delta Pro plugged into the top, one plugged into the bottom, and I'm gonna break that tab. Really important, do not break your neutral tab. That's what we're shooting for right there. 
Now we're gonna gently fold after mounting the box. We're gonna gently fold those wires into the box, making sure that the ground conductor is not touching any of the hot or neutral terminals. You've got play in the receptacle, so if that box is a couple of degrees left or right of plumb, it's not gonna hurt anything. Okay. Let me show you one thing. You might have noticed that I didn't use a shepherd's hook as I did with the ground terminal, and that's because that's not the mechanism of this receptacle. There's, there's a clamping plate inside of that. This is not a backstab. The backstabs don't have enough holding power for me. Um, track home builders will use those, but man, We've just repaired too many failed backstab receptacles. And so that mounting mechanism right there, that plate is really solid. This is a 20 amp commercial grade receptacle. I wanted some capacity on this baby, some capacity. So this is a good and durable installation and termination method. All right, got it kind of folded in there, not mashed. Number one square drive to drive us home. Finishing touches are so satisfying. If you've cut your box in nice and tight, you should not have any exposed drywall issues. And if your gloves aren't too dirty. Torque spec is here on the side of the breaker. That's 36 inch pounds. I recommend torquing everything. Under torquing is a problem. Over torquing is a problem. Let's, uh, this is not the neatest panel I've ever seen here. I wonder how many hands have been in here. I'm gonna run this ground wire up the back here. Careful, careful, energized panel. Some of you are more scared than my mom out there right now. Come on guys. Number two square goes in there. Wear your safety glasses. You never know when there could be a fireworks show if you're working live. Yes, it has happened. All right, my neutral, kind of got it planned out there. Strip off another half inch and bring it in. Come on, baby. Black, black on top. I'm gonna land that is L1 and that corresponds to the black at the top that's incoming on the left and L2, which is red, incoming on the right. So I'll give myself a little extra conductor. If I ever had, let's say something burned up, right? Something goes bad. Wire, breaker burns up, it cooks the wire, gotta strip it back and terminate it. I've got a little extra to work with. Wiring, um, should almost, if, almost never be tied as a piano string. I can't think of any time that you'd want it to be that tight. But there are a lot of applications out there, so I'll remain open-minded. Use a tool that's going to provide some unofficial insulating value to hold that as I tighten it down. I'm not going to overdo it. Guys, one of the things I wanted to reach out to you today about was this. I need a licensed electrical contractor in the fine state of Texas. Yes, I am for hire in the state of Texas. I'll qualify that temporary hire. If you are an electrical contractor watching this in the state of Texas and you think that we have alignment on who we are and how we work, and then I invite you to reach out to me on hello at electricproacademy.com. Hello at electricproacademy.com. I would love to do work together. Got a YouTube channel down there building a house. We need to collaborate. I could use your help. Time to torque it down. 36 inch pounds. This torque screwdriver does not have insulating value. So definitely torquing that breaker in the off position. But we're ready now to energize and test. Use my favorite favorite plug-in tester. That's a Klein tool, so it's gonna give me a voltage readout as well as tell me if there are any issues. That's 120 volts. And that's 120 volts. And they're separate phases. We're good to go. Let's pl plug these EcoFlows in and watch them. Watch them purr like a kitten. These EcoFlow batteries make just a little bit of noise. I'd say equal to that of a refrigerator when they're really cranking. Turn, return my torque tool to the lowest setting when it's not in use. All right. Whoop. 
remove the appropriate breaker knockouts. Be very cautious. You have a large hunk of conductive steel in your hand next to an energized panel. You could turn that panel off for a little bit extra safety. Hold it, pressure with one hand. Screws with the, the available hand. Don't tighten those down all the way because you need a little bit of flexibility to line up all the screw holes. They're large and fairly generous with a large screw head to boot. We're gonna label this breaker and then demonstrate function of the batteries. Pam, let's see these batteries in action. Here's the step-by-step. -step. When you lose power from the grid, you would turn the main breaker to the off position. There's quite a bit of resistance there just because that's a big 200 amp breaker. Then you could either turn off the supply breaker to these batteries so they aren't self-circulating or you could simply unplug the power supply from the batteries. Again, what you don't want is power through the outflow that's then trying to fulfill the inflow demand. They'll short cycle and shut themselves down. So that's off. Now we're ready to slide the mechanical interlock up and turn that two pole 30 amp breaker, which is connected to the double voltage energy hub onto these units here. Last step is to turn on the double voltage energy hub with that switch. One press, power is on. Check the screen. You can see input wattage is now zero and output on this one is 991. Two will be fluctuating in real time, giving you a good readout. 43 watts on that unit. And they'll self-manage. They've got all the safety protections built in. Over voltage, over temperature, under temperature. If anything should happen, they'll self-regulate and shut down to prevent any kind of catastrophic event. So now I can use my power tool? Yeah, let's run it and see what the screen reads. All right. Watch that number on the lower right. A motor load has a massive inrush current. To get that thing from resting position to full on, and when it's cutting through that wood, it's gonna be purring hot. Let's see if the EcoFlow can handle it or if it kicks out. Ready? There it is, purring like a kitten. Good job, EcoFlow. This is the EcoFlow double voltage energy hub. It's got the generator, input here, two 20 amp, 120 volt receptacles. And then this is the on off button on top. I just shut down the whole house. These leads on the side then feed respectively one into each battery. On the back of these batteries, there's a port that allows for ganging of the batteries such that you can stack more batteries for more whole home backup. Respect for your engineer's EcoFlow. This is a Reliance Controls generator input plug, 30 amp rated, it's real standard. You can buy these off Amazon, check the description. Ball State is already widely recognized for its school of architecture. Widely recognized. Having landed an award like this and performing well in the past, defending that title in the future, you're gonna get top talent from India coming here, right? <laughs> It'd be interesting. It'd you know, be great. a lot of recognition. Yeah, yeah, it's been already, a lot of people have reached out and, and we've had different organizations that seek to us and ask us and we've all put together papers and research to talk about it. That's why it's important that we monitor it, the performance of this. So we need to gather the data. Data makes a difference, quite honestly. Um, you can talk all you want to about the daylight that happens in this beautiful space, but give them the daylight levels and say, boy, we don't need any electric light at all. I and mean, we have it on right now because we love the way it showcases the lighting that the students made, but we don't need it, you know, and that's a huge savings, you know, so just starting to give data and numbers to those things, I think will be really a game changer and, and help others to adopt some of these policies and principles and just design strategies and, and understand why it's important to do it. From renewable energy to just simple passive design strategies like being able to open those lower windows when the breezes are coming in at eight or seven miles per hour and open up the windows at the top and create a stack event, which basically brings in cool air and releases hot air. It's a simple strategy, but you know we've kind of lost sight of a lot of those things. We hermetically seal mm -hmm. all our buildings and turn the air conditioning on high, you know, and we don't realize that there's ways that we can basically be more effective and efficient in, in how we use it. So hopefully that, that's a game changer for people. 
and that is the function of the EcoFlow Delta Pro whole home backup solution. If you're interested in details on the generator inlet, I've got a video on that. If you want more specs and features of this particular battery unit, I've got a vid on that. And subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money.